Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll take a look at how to create a dissolve effect to get something like this. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the material. Essentially, the material is everything that we can see down here. We'll go node by node and I'll explain what each node is doing and how to access them in sequencer so we can animate them. The very first thing we need to do is with any given material that we have, we're going to blend it with a make material attributes node. How do we blend it? We're going to blend it through a blend material attributes. So what we'll do is A is going to be our actual material, which is the armor for this Paragon character in this case. And B is going to be our make material attributes node for our emissive and opacity mask to get that dissolve effect, essentially our dissolve material. And it's, everything is going to be cut out through a mask or an alpha, which is going to be this dither temporal anti-aliasing node, which creates a very cool effect. Let's take a look at this material. So from left to right, we have a noise dissolve panner. And a panner is giving that movement up and down and left and right. But what it's doing here, particularly, let's step into a position in which we can see the effect. What it's doing here particularly is giving this movement, which is not up, down, left, or right. What that movement is, is essentially moving the UV. Now, if the UV is not exactly aligned with the texture perfectly, it's not going to go up, down, left, or right. It's just simply going to go in the direction of the UVs. Right now, the panner, which is a parameter here that's being exposed, R and G, two of the values, are giving it movement. So this is for you to play with. You could even not use any panner movement at all because at zero, this also looks like a very cool effect. You could even want something like this and have it stick like this for a couple of moments. But the effect of the dissolve is the same even if you're using or not using the panner. I just added a panner because I feel it gives uh, this, this very cool nano effect. Let's keep going. So the panner is also being tiled. The entire noise is being tiled by a simple multiply on the texture coordinate node that is doing a uh, multiply for a noise styling, which is a simple constant value. The speed of the panner down here is being controlled by X, Y, which are R and G in this particular node here. And then this is a dissolve pattern. So in here, we can change this texture and the effect that we get is going to be different. Now, sadly, textures cannot be changed in sequencer as of today, and this is April, 2025. Hopefully soon we get that ability, but you can change this into your material instance. So that is why this is exposed as a parameter. Now, if you're wondering what a parameter is, it's essentially any node that has a value that can be parameterized. We can right click on it and convert to parameter. And let's call it parameter. Uh, and then this one is now going to be able to be used in sequencer. So. Our dissolve pattern node here is doing two things. It's feeding the opacity mask of our final material, and it's also being fed into the opacity mask dither, which is a very cool effect that we're gonna check out in a second, but this is the main fade amount. We are subtracting from the noise an amount, making it so it disappears. That leads into a power, which we're going to be using to create sharpness with our dither, because all of that is being fed into the alpha threshold of the dither. Let's take a look at what these two values do before we continue on. So fade amount, pretty self-explanatory. It's essentially going to be literally how much fade we are doing, and that is the main thing I'm animating to get this effect going. And then the nano dither sharpness is, I'm going to get closer to him. You can see the little dots in the red down there. The nano dither sharpness, what it's doing is giving us more or less of that ghosting dither effect. That's essentially what that value is doing down here. Our power is also feeding into the emissive color, which is on the edges. You see how everything is connected. Now the edges, and the uh, emissive color are created by a couple of values here. So from right to left, we're going to go from right to left, which makes our life easier. It's a multiply for the color, which we have down here, to give it more or less power, nano power, uh, color power, pretty self-explanatory. How fiery my color is here, super self-explanatory. Very cool effect because it's also illuminating the face of our metahuman, which is really, really cool. 
If we go back, that color is being multiplied by a smooth step where we have a nano transition smooth and then a nano edge sharpness. Now, these may sound very similar, but what these are doing are essentially, again, if we get a bit closer to him, what these are doing, and we're going to press G so we don't see the outlines, let's take a look at these two other values. The nano transition smooth is the less smooth it is, the more it's going to go for the outside. You can see that how it's bleeding into the dither of our mask. And the nano edge sharpness is how inside that match is going to go into the noise. So transition smooth is for the outside to, to blend into the dither. And then edge sharpness is to blend into the noise itself. So pretty cool. Again, all of these values are just for you to play around to get a feel of what effect you can get. And that's it. Make sure that you don't go super extreme with some of these values because you do get uh, some of these very strange effects on the edges. So make sure that you keep that in mind as you're playing with it. But again, this looks pretty, pretty cool. And this is just the fade amount that's being animated, which is giving us this effect. You could even use it to leave some effect like this, which is pretty powerful. If you don't want the cutout to be there, you simply remove the opacity mask and you just feed the noise into the emissive. So you get this emissive effect. Again, remember you can change the effect, the noise masking here, and that will change the way this behaves. Now there's one more thing happening here that some of you may have caught on. You can see that the hair of my metahuman is actually going into the helmet and out of the helmet. So how I did that, super simple, how I made the body of the Paragon character follow the head of the metahuman. Well, that's made in this video. So if you want to follow instructions there, just go and check out that video. The metahuman here is simply grabbing the metahuman blueprint, going into the plus icon, finding the hair, and then in the hair, we are going to go for plus and find this here, the group, the groom group's description, and it's going to show here. So how do we access all of this that we just created? Well, if we have our skeletal mesh here as either a component of the blueprint or by itself, we need to access the component itself inside that skelly mesh and then plus track and find the material that we have assigned to that skeletal mesh. In this case is head armor nano. And then what we're going to do is plus icon in the parameters. And that's going to give us all of the parameters we've been using. We're going to give into fade amount and nano color. So those are the ones that we are going to probably be using the most. We can see that our metahuman lost its hair, but I'm just going to do the quick example here. And then nano color, we can change it to something like that. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.